Okay, so now we're going to begin with our opening prayer. And who would like to pray for us to begin? I see, okay, there's two hands. Okay, Craig, you can go ahead and then we'll have Anisha. So now we can, I can definitely see you. So that's great. So you can pray. And I think and Alicia also raised her hand and her sister as well. So you can start us off. Unmute your mic. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for protecting us throughout your holy Sabbath day. Please help us to keep the Sabbath day. Forgive us for all our sins. Help us to understand what we study and learn in this Sabbath school. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, and, and Alicia, and I think it's Myla. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name correctly. You can go ahead and yes. unmute. You can go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please prepare so help us so help us to obey for us to learn something from Saturn School. And Jesus and I pray, Amen. One pray more. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Please help us. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Please help us to listen. Help us to obey. Please have a good day. Let's learn something from this. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer as well. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you've gathered us here another Sabbath so that we can learn more about Jesus. We pray that you will touch the minds of the of the youth and the children and that your presence will be felt and be in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We'd like to welcome everyone to Heaven is a Happy Place. Children and Youth Sabbath School is always wonderful to have you here. Is there anyone that is joining us for the first time? Okay, so we have our, our regular uh, Sabbath School members and without you, there will be no Sabbath School. So we welcome you and we thank you for being with us today. Okay, we're going to now sing our welcome song. Oh, before we sing our welcome song, I would like to hear from you. How did you share God's love this week? Anyone can share some way that you were able to share God's love. Sometimes our testimonies may not seem as though it might be something great, but even in the small things, we can share Jesus. Okay, Ariana, you can go ahead. I wrote a card for someone who got bit by a dog. Oh, that's wonderful. And I'm sure they were so happy to receive that card and perhaps was comforted. Dana, you can go ahead. I also wrote a, I'm also writing a card for someone who is sick and is really, really sick and has a big body in the hospital. So I'm gonna write a card for them. I haven't, oh. but I started already. Oh, very good. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit impressed upon you to begin to do that. Okay. If anyone wants to share, maybe you're impressed by the, the sharing and maybe you're thinking about doing something. You can talk about what you're thinking about wanting to do as well. And that can probably strengthen your conviction to do it even more. So that's all. You're also welcome to do that as well. Okay, uh, Sister Angie. Hello, everyone.
everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, I had asked Adam, what did he do, do this week um, to share God's love? And he, ha he has an appointment with someone every other week. And all the time when he say goodbye to this person, he says, God bless you. I, um, goodbye. God bless you. God loves you. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Adam. Thank you. You're welcome. You, you're welcome. Okay, I see Annalisa is raising her hand. You can go ahead and unmute. I help. I help my. Well, I fixed my mommy and daddy's bed. Oh, how lovely! Thank you for sharing that. I fixed my mommy and daddy's bed too. That's very good, and I'm sure they appreciated your help. Yeah. Very good. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Now, is there anyone that haven't had an opportunity to say their name in the welcome song and would like to say their name today? Me. Goodell. Okay, you can go ahead, Goodell. Okay, we're going to get started. Welcome girls and boys to your Sabbath school of joy. Heaven is a happy place for us. Let us smile and sing and give thanks for everything as we talk about our Lord Jesus. Pay attention friends to today's lesson. Listen closely to God's word. Come and sing along as we sing a Sabbath song. Heaven is a happy place for us. I'm a pilgrim down in this dark and sinker's earth. I am heading to my home above. Where there's no disgrace, heaven is a happy place. I am heading to my home above. I am heading there to that land so fair, to that beautiful land of light. Tell me what's your name? Goodell. Will you join me up for a train and come with me to that home above? On my way to there, I see children everywhere. Are they headed to that home above? Where the air is so sweet, my Lord Jesus, I shall meet. I would like to go there. We will be all right in the land of light. Where there shall no more be night, no more tears, no pain, we shall never part again. Heaven is a place of great delight. Amen. And that's so welcome everyone to Sabbath School. Okay, we'll have Sister Nicole introduce our lesson. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I pray everyone had a wonderful week. And my name is Sister Nicole, and we are going to learn about a new lesson this week. Who would like to read the title for us? Come and rest a while. Very good, Orion. Very good. And this is taken from Desire of Ages, chapter 38. And we have a memory verse. And we would like all of you all to memorize this verse. Who is going to read this for, for me? We need a strong reader to read this verse for us. Me, Abigail. Me. I'm looking for hands. <laughs> Abigail, are you there? I don't even see you, Abigail. <laughs> I'm here. 
Okay, all right. I'll let Abigail go ahead and read that, okay? And then the others, others will have more opportunity to read in just a moment. Go ahead. Be, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Very good. So be still and know that I am God. Okay, so we're going to talk about that today. Who would like to read this big word for us? I would, me, Jessica. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to pick Gabriel. <laughs> okay, okay, I would like everyone to go ahead and raise their hands so that I can call on you, okay? So Gabriel, you want, you want to try this word and then, then Jessica can try, okay? Go ahead. Contemplative. Very good. You did a great job reading that word. All right. So what's the word again, Jessica? Com contemplative. Okay. It's contemplative. So what do you think that could possibly mean? What does it mean to be contemplative? It's okay to guess. Does anyone have a guess? To think. That's right, to think. <laughs> and that's what we should all be doing right now as we try to, to kind of uh, figure out this word, right? You're actually contemplating right now. What does this word mean? You're thinking, okay? So let's look at the actual definition that we have. It's who's going to read that for me? Craig, you want to read that? Me. To express an attitude of solemn thought and have an habitual meditation. Those who regular seek, regularly seek the Lord and His divine counsel are com contemplative. They often come apart from their from the present cares of life in order to pray and refresh their souls in God. As I have ages chapter said it. Okay, thank you very much, okay? So it's thinking, it's thinking, right? Thinking, but not just any kind of thinking. We want to bring this home, right, to the word of God. What should we be thinking about when we're being contemplative? God. God and the word of God, okay? And when we are, when we are thinking about the word of God, this should, should be a habit, right? Something that we do continuously, and when we do that, we will find ourselves more and more in a place of rest. Because when we think about the things of God, God gives us rest for our souls. So this is what our lesson is about today. All right. So we'll learn more about this shortly. All right. Let's go to our next part, <laughs> which is our memory song with Brother Andrew. Amen. As you uh, uh, shared those words, just Nicole, I just thought about um, that verse in Isaiah 46, uh, 26, rather. Um, it's in the beginning of that chapter. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So there's peace that comes with being contemplative, right? Everyone. Amen. So there is a song that we're going to sing that you see on the screen is called, yes, 26th Street. Thank you, Brother Abishek. So there's a verse, uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry, our memory song is there is a quiet, uh, a quiet place rather. So let's be blessed by this song. There is a quiet place far from the rapid pace where God can soothe my troubled mind. Sheltered by tree and flower, there in my quiet hour, within my cares are left behind. 
Whether a garden small or on a mountain tall, new strength and courage there I find. Then from this quiet place, I go prepared to face a new day with love for all mankind. Whether a garden small or on a mountain tall, new strength and courage there I find Then from this quiet place I go prepared to face a new day With love for all mankind Amen Amen Thank you for sharing that memory song it is very befitting our study and it's very soothing amen all right so who wants to go ahead and say the name of our uh, mission uh, mission adventist pioneer that we are studying for this quarter or for this month You can go ahead and unmute and just say it out. It's okay. Good low, ha, good low Harper Bell. Yes, good low Harbor Bell. And let us do a, just a small recap of some of the things that we've learned the last time that we were together. Can anyone remember where he was born? So he was born in Watertown, New York, okay? And then he re relocated, their family at some point re relocated to uh, Michigan, okay? And Brother Goodlow, uh, Goodlow Bell, he was a teacher and for, I think it said 17 years, and then he got sick. And when he got sick, where did he go? Can anybody remember what Adventist uh, place he went in order to receive treatment? Battle Creek. Battle Creek. The sanitarium. Um, Sister Donna? Sister Donna, there's just little stuff popping up on your screen like, and it says, please move this window away from the shared application. Okay, can you can you guys see everything okay right now? I can see, but it just keeps on coming. Yes. Up. Okay, I'm not really sure why. It's popping up, and it's popping down, and it's popping up, and it's popping down, like every time. Thank you so much for letting us know. Um, okay, I'm not really sure. We're going to move on, okay, because of time. And we're just going to let it pop up and not allow it to bother us, okay? All right. So uh, we, we're going to just move on. And so uh, Brother Bell, Mr. Bell, he went to the, the, um, the sanitarium. And there he learned about the Adventist faith. And when he learned about the Adventist faith, uh, one of the things that they told him to do because of health reasons that he should be outside working in the outdoors in order to get fresh air and exercise so that he can feel better. Okay, these are the things that they had asked him to do. And wh while he was doing that, he was chopping wood. He met um, Sister White's sons and they were talking and found out that he was a teacher. And when he explained a few things to them, they realized that we can understand and he speaks so clearly that we understand the work. And so they went home and told their parents and who can remember what happened next? He 
became their school teacher. Okay, he became their, their school teacher. And so uh, the first they started off in the, the Review and Herald building. This was the, the old Review and Herald building. This is where they started off. And then they went to the Battle, the Battle Creek College. They went on the campus to have the school there. And the school began to grow very rapidly. And this was about 1872. Many people wanted to be a part of the school. And so Brother, uh, Brother Bell, he was the teacher there, but he was a very stern and strict teacher. Okay. Loved children very much, but he also desired them to, to do the work that they were that they were called to do. And oftentimes um, that the parents were were not, you know, they didn't very much want a strict teacher. Uh, but the thing is that many of the students um, they came from homes where there wasn't much discipline. That made it very hard for Mr. Bell. A matter, a matter of fact, one of the readings that I read said that even one of the students threw him down the stairs. So you could imagine the type of children that he had to deal with. And so we can see why Mr. Bell was so stern. And, and he also wanted to make sure that his students, they were able to learn um, the concepts that they were teaching him. And so um, the Lord blessed him with the opportunity because the same year in 1872, the Lord had blessed Ellen White with the message about education and reform um, through education. And Brother Goodloe Bell was able to take some of their principles and apply them to, um, to his teaching. Okay, so not only was Brother Bell, not only was he a part of the starting the, the church schools, but he was very heavily a part of Sabbath school. Isn't that wonderful? We're having Sabbath school and we're learning about the foundations of Sabbath school. So he was one of the first Sabbath school superintendents in 1869. We know that, you know, James White started the youth instructor and the Sabbath school, he let out in that. But Brother Goodloe Bell, he took it on another level. Because he was so well organized and because he was so strict and thorough and precise, he uh, integrated some more things into Sabbath school. Okay, so let's think about some of the things he, uh, he, we can appreciate that he incorporated. One of the things that he did was um, incorporate attendance taken. Do you think that's important to take attendance in Sabbath school? Raise your hand, let me know, and tell me why do you think that's so important? Yes. Why do you think that's important? Go ahead, Craig. Okay, two things. The first one is that to make sure everyone is there. And the second one is that a while ago, did you say that one of his students threw, threw good little bell down the stairs? Yes. Yeah. One of the students did so. And so, as you mentioned, he was, because of good little bell's character, he was very precise, right? And so he recognized that if you took attendance, you will be able to keep track of He wrote a youth uh, uh, Sabbath school lesson lesson book series, and it's pretty intense. Um, when I looked at the book, the, the the young people really studied back then. They really got into the word, and you know what? They were very. They really wanted to be a part of Sabbath school. How many of you will walk five miles to Sabbath school? To get to Sabbath school. Any of you will want to do that? Maybe? I would. <laughs> well, 
there was a student that walked five miles just to get to Mr. Bell's Sabbath school class. And you know what Mr. Bell said? He said, if you, because you're so willing to attend, if you can get a few of your friends together, I will come over to where you are and have Sabbath school where you are. Tell me what they think it's about when you see the bird's nest. Okay. okay. Beginning of life. Beginning of life. Okay. I think it's. I think it's a, It's about us children. Very good. It is about. It is about the children. So he, uh, Mr. Bell, started a kindergarten class. And you know what, he, he started the first kindergarten class and you know, he called the kindergarten's class the bird's nest. How many of you are five years and below? Raise your hand if you're five and below. Yes, so you would have been in the class that was called the bird's nest. And what a beautiful name. That means that you would be nurtured and you, you would have to grow right and be fed very well and so this is why uh he gave the class this name okay and he was able to be the teacher for the kindergarten class in sabbath school so mr bell he uh played a very important role in the beginning of sabbath school and all the things that we can appreciate because of sabbath school and we also want to mention that in Massachusetts, there's a school called Atlantic Union College. And so Mr. Bell had a very important role in, in the starting up of this school in South Lancaster, Massachusetts. Uh, before it was the, uh, the elementary school there, the middle school, but it turned into, a, uh, also developed more into a college. But he played a very important role a matter of fact, when they, when the parents at Michigan thought they were, he was too tough, he he was a little bit discouraged, and he decided to go go away for a while. But that didn't take away his spirit uh, of wanting to teach children. He started again. He became a principal of this school and continued his work. And uh, sadly, Brother Bell, he he had died in a horse accident. Uh, a piece of paper went in front of the horse's face. The horse got very nervous and scared and it threw uh, Mr. Bell over and he got his head hit on the ground. And so um, he, this is how he died, but his work still live on. Mr. Bell was very interesting because Ellen White said that he played the role of three men. That means he did a lot of work. He even started a group called, I think it's called Cozy Corner or Cozy Reading, where people just came together and read. Uh, he started so many different things because and wrote so many different books because he really desired that young people and children learned about Jesus. Okay, and we want to thank you for the mission time that we we were able to have together. All right, we're going to now move into our um, our sabbath school session all right so as we get started we need to pray that is important isn't it whenever we have bible class it is important that we pray does anybody know why we pray when we start bible class just a quick question anybody want to tell us why for god can be in our hearts why yes so God can be in our hearts and so that the Lord will uh, lead us and guide us as we study his word. All right. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful for the time that we have to share together. We are thankful for um, everything that we have learned thus far, Lord, uh, about uh, 
Brother Goodloe Bell. We're thankful for his witness, Lord. And um, we pray, Lord God, that we may also continue to listen to your word, Lord, as you, as you continue to speak to our hearts through this Bible lesson, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you be with me. Help me to continue to surrender to you, Lord, that I may hear your voice and may be able to clearly speak unto your children, Lord. We pray that the children's hearts would be open to hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today we have a very exciting lesson, okay? Even though we're talking about rest, it still is pretty good, I have to say, okay? And even if your mom or your dad is around, you want to invite them to listen too, because you know what? Oftentimes, our mommies and our daddies, they're kind of tired, okay? <laughs> I mean... I know at times as a mommy, I get kind of tired, okay? So if your mommy or daddy is around, you can invite them to listen with you. And we can all hear what the Lord is saying to our hearts today because he is inviting us to rest. Now, didn't we talk about rest already? We talked about that, huh? Remember that? We talked about the invitation where Jesus invited, invites us to rest. Well, guess what? Rest is so important that we're talking about it again for another lesson today, okay? All right, so let us get started. So remember our last lesson, which was Desire of Ages chapter 37. So what were we talking about in our last lesson? The first evangelist. Okay, the first evangelist, says Johanna. Okay, so what was that about? Who can, who can raise their hand quickly and tell me what the last lesson was about? Jeremiah. I see Jeremiah's hand. Are you going to unmute yourself and tell me? No? He's shy. Okay, Lily, your turn then. Can you tell me what the last lesson was about? <laughs> <laughs> no? Who wants to tell me? Because we've got to remember the things that we're learning, okay? Evangelist. Sharing Jesus. That's right. It was about sharing Jesus, okay? So the first evangelists uh, were sent by Jesus out, right? They were sent out to share with others about who Jesus was and what he wanted and what to do to, for them, right? So who were these first evangelists? Who were they? They were the, the, the disciples of Jesus. That's right. Okay. So guess who I have behind me? Okay. So I've got all 12 of them here behind me, all 12 of the disciples, or we could, we could also call them apostles, right? All 12 of them behind me. So Jesus sent them out two by two to share in the, in the towns that were, that were there, right? Throughout the towns in Israel. Okay. All right, so while they were there, guess what happened? The disciples went out two by two. And what did they do? So they went out to, to preach and to share God's love, right? Do you think that some people listened? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, thank God. Some people listened. Some people were receptive, right? And some people, you think everyone listened? Now, unfortunately not, right? So there were many successes that the, that the um, disciples had, right? And there were many things that encouraged them as they went on their journey and they shared with, with others. But there's also some things that, you know, kind of discouraged them and frustrated them. So when they came back from their missionary journey, guess what? They were excited. They came right to Jesus and they wanted to share with him everything that they had learned, everything that they had gone through, everything that they had experienced as they were out on their missionary journey. So have you ever been maybe on a long trip before or you went out and maybe your mommy or your daddy didn't come with you, right? And when you get home, like you're so excited to tell them what happened, right? Has that ever happened to you? 
You want to tell them everything. Maybe you went, maybe you went out to the park and you got to ride your bike or you did something nice. And you just, you're just so excited to tell them everything that happened. And guess what? That's the same way that the disciples were when they saw Jesus again. They wanted to tell him everything. They said they wanted to tell him all the experiences that they had on their missionary journey. They were excited. And guess what? Just as the disciples were excited to tell Jesus about it, Jesus was excited to have them back. So during that time, when Jesus had sent the disciples out, were they together? No. No. No, Jesus had equipped them. He anointed them. He gave them his Holy Spirit that they would go out alone, okay? And that meant that Jesus was not with them. I'm not using my slides here, okay? So they were evangelists. And I have a question for you. How did Jesus prepare his disciples for ministry? How did he prepare them to go out and share with others? Two by two. Two by two, okay. He prayed with them. He prayed with them, that's right. He what else? By teaching, by teaching him his ways. That's why Jesus took the disciples everywhere with him so that they can learn from him and so that they can do it themselves when they do it themselves. That, that was great. You guys are giving wonderful answers. You all are wonderful Bible students. You are listening, okay? So thank God for that. Okay, you have one, one more thing? Yeah. Go ahead, he, Hannah. He did Bible studies with them. He did Bible studies with them, okay. So everything that you all are saying is exactly right, okay? So Jesus prepared his disciples for ministry by sharing with them, right? And one of the, he prayed with them, he did Bible studies, he, he shared with them the truths, right? His truth, his divine truth, so that they would be ready to share with everyone as they went out, right? And one important point that I especially want to bring out is he was with them, right? They did everything with him, especially, especially what, about three of them, right? Peter, James, and John, right? They were always there, the Bible tells us. They were there experiencing the things that Jesus was doing firsthand with their own eyes. So that is how Jesus, or one of the ways, I should say, one of the important, important ways that we're bringing out today of how Jesus shared with his disciples, okay? So he was continuously with them, sharing and teaching them, okay? So when the disciples came back, they again wanted time alone with Jesus, okay? They wanted time alone with him because just as you're excited to share with your mommy and daddy, they were excited. They needed to share with Jesus everything that had gone on and happened. Okay? Can you give me that, Noah? Give me this board. Okay. So they were so excited to share with Jesus. But can you see this? How many people are on this board? There's lots of people on the board, isn't there? They were so, can you even find Jesus? Can you find Jesus on the board? There he is, right? Yes. Yes, he is. He's right here, okay? So Jesus was there. The disciples were there. But guess what? There was a lot of people around too. Everybody was seeking Jesus. There were so many people around calling him wanting healing, right? So there was no place alone where the disciples could just talk with Jesus. He was crowded by people daily of people coming and asking him for healing and wanting to, to hear the words of life. And do you think that Jesus just wanted to turn them away? You think that, you think that Jesus didn't want to help them? Of course he did. Jesus wanted to help them. That's right. Of course he wanted to help them, right? 
But you know what? Even though Jesus wanted to help each and every person, Jesus realized that it was very important to take time away from his work of sharing with all of these people. This was Jesus's life mission to share, to heal, and to preach that he would soon die for their sins so that they could be saved. But he also knew that the only way that he could be effective in his work is if he decided from time to time that he's got to slip away. Okay? And why do you think that Jesus would slip away? Is it, isn't that his life work? Wait, wait a second. Why would Jesus need to go away from all the people? Didn't he come for the people? Well, he, yes, he did come for the people, but he also needed time to spend with his father, his heavenly father, alone on a mountain. That's right. You got it. Okay. So, yes, Jesus needed to spend time apart, but he realized that he needs to seek the father. Okay. And you know what? The best way to do that is you and the father alone. Okay, so let me go to my next slide here, okay? So have you guys ever seen this word before? Communion. What does that mean? Communion means supper with Jesus. Supper with Jesus, that's right. Anybody want to add more to the, to the definition of this word? Talking with Jesus. Talking with Jesus. Good. It also means to have a close relationship with God. You guys are doing wonderful, okay? So communion with That's God. Jesus. That's right. So communion <laughs> means I am sharing with God. And I'm not sure if that's kind of inverted for you, but sharing with God, okay? So guess what happens when I have communion with God? Who can tell me what happens? Who can read that? The soul comes strength. Say that again, Gabriel. Power comes for the soul. That's right. Power, right? You get power when you commune with Jesus. Who, want, who wants to read that on the, on the screen? Jadal, go ahead. Make us good for labor for right. Christ. That's right. So when we commune with Jesus, that, that communion makes us fit for labor for Christ. Do you know that so many people are tired? They're tired, not even just from everyday work. So many people have given their, their lives to Christ and they're working for, for Jesus. They're doing good things, right? But when we do all of these things, even if we're doing it for God, you know what often happens? We get tired. And we need rest, right? We need rest. But guess what? True rest is what makes us fit for labor with Christ. Okay? So, guess what I have here? Plain water. I've got some water in here. Can you see my water? Can you see my water? I think my thing is kind of on it. Okay? So this... This is the water of life. This isn't, just, this isn't just any kind of water, okay? This is wonderful water, okay? So I've got my water here. Here, here guys, take a cup. Let's all drink some water. Not just any water. We want to drink of the water of life, okay? So I'm going to give my water of life to everybody. Oh, drink up. It's so good. Drink the water. The Lord is good. He's given us freely of this water. Uh, what happened to my cup? What happened? It's, only open. it's empty. But, but, what happened? But I have my cup. There's none for me. No, no, I drink the water. <laughs> no, 
poetry kid, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you did. You probably did. But you, <laughs> you know what happens? So often, we're so busy giving the water of life to everyone else that we don't even take the time to take the water of life for ourselves. Do you think, thank you, you had a sharing with me. That's so sweet. <laughs> but do you think that's what Jesus wants? Do you think he wants us just to share with everyone else and never have any water of life for ourselves? Hmm? You guys got to talk to me. I want to hear your voice. No. Absolutely not. Okay. The Lord wants us to be partakers. No. Thank you. The Lord wants us to be partakers of the water of life for ourselves. Okay. I wish I could give you some across the screen. <laughs> I, see, I see somebody with their cup there. <laughs> but the, we have to be partakers first of the water of life. Okay. That is the only way that we can be effective in our work. We can't just continue to give to everyone else without first drinking ourselves. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So we're going to talk about communion a little bit more, okay? So what is communion again? Sharing with God. That's right. Sharing sharing and exchanging intimate thoughts and feelings with God. Do you guys know what intimate means? Personal. Personal. Very good. And that's a perfect word. Okay. So when you're sharing with, with Christ, with God, personal things, does that mean that everybody's going to know these things? Is this is what you're just going to share with everyone? No. 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 That's right. So would I, would I do that? Am I going to do that in a crowd? No. Would I share my, in, my no. intimate personal thoughts with God in a crowd? No. 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 What, does the Lord, what does the Lord encourage us to do? He encourages us to go to a small place or somewhere quiet and where you can think through everything with no noise around or anything. So you can talk to you. So you can talk to God. That's right. So he encourages us to go to a quiet place, right? Where it's just us, just, just me and God, just you and God, where you can talk to him. And tell him everything that's on your heart. Do you know sometimes we just can continue to go about with the motions, right? We continue on with our daily lives. And we don't take the time to tell God everything that's bothering us. Everything that's on our hearts. And do you know what that does for us? It makes us stressed. It causes great distress for us. And you know, we feel heavy. We are no longer in that place of rest that the Lord desires us to be. And why? Because we're not taking the time with him as we should. Okay. So when we have communion in church, right? What do we do? What do you see here on the, on the screen? Some of the bread, some of the unleavened bread, and some of the wine. Although it's not really wine, it's just some substance of wine. Right. Okay. We so drink, we drink, we drink, we feed, wash the, uh, wash other people's feet. Say that again. We wash other people's feet. Oh, we wash other people's feet. That's right. Okay. So that's right, okay? That's the service of humility when we have the service of communion that goes along with our service of communion when we're at church, right? So we're, we're gonna talk about this specific part that we see on the screen, okay, right now. And this is just, we're gonna go into communion a little bit more in a later lesson, but this is almost like a preview, okay? So we see on the screen, we see the grape juice, right? And we also see the bread. 
So what does the bread represent? It represents the body of Christ. That's right. The body of Christ. And what does the blood represent or the grape juice? I just said it. Huh? <laughs> what it represents the, the blood. It represents the blood of Jesus. It represents the blood of Jesus, right? But guess what we do? What do we do with that? We take it and we do what? We, we eat and drink. We eat and we drink it. So why, why do we do that, guys? That's, that's interesting. Because to remember Jesus' crucifixion. For me. That's right. Very good. It, so it, is all, it is also to remember the Last Supper of when the disciples took a piece of the bread and the wine and drank it. Just before Jesus' crucifixion in the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's correct. Okay. So all of these answers are correct. But now let's think about it in terms of our word. Communion. We call it communion for a reason. Why do we call it communion? Anybody want to guess? Because we drink and wash the feet. Okay, we drink and we wash the feet. Okay, that's correct. So we're, we're looking at the symbols, right? But let's think about what it means. When we take it, what are we doing? When we're drinking of it, what are we doing? We're showing something in particular, right? Right? Mm -hmm. we, when we take it, we are partakers with Christ, in Christ, okay? We are showing that we have part in Christ. We are showing that we are with him, okay? That it's not just us doing this as a, as a tradition, but we're doing it to show that we have part with him, okay? So, in a sense, we're connected with him. So, it's something to show something greater. So, we take this, we eat it, we ingest it to show something greater, to show that we have what? communion with him, a relationship with him. So that's why if we don't have a relationship with him or, and don't desire a relationship with him, should we be taking part in communion? No, okay? It is for those who have a relationship with him and who desire that and desire all sin to be removed from their hearts, okay? So communion is important. And when we take communion, we are taking of the bread of life. Who's the bread of life? God. Jesus. Jesus, that's right. We are partaking of the bread of life, which is Jesus, right? And when we drink the, the blood, what are we doing? We're drinking the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me have the plug. Right, but it is a symbol. I want to make that clear. It's a symbol, okay? It is a symbol of what Christ wants for us, that we are part. We have joined ourselves to him, okay? So, you know what we need to do? We need to feast on the bread of life each and every day. Okay, I'm not saying you literally have to have communion, but I want you to think about the symbol. Okay, we need to be partakers with Christ daily. Okay. I've got my animation there. Okay. So, we know that communion is actually true rest okay so when we have communion with christ we and we share with christ right our, our thoughts our feelings right but in that we have true rest and he makes us fit to do his work okay so guess what happens? 
even when the when the disciples went out, right? When they went out two by two, they went out and they shared with everybody. And if they decided that they weren't going to come back and continue to be partakers of what Christ had to share, you know what? There is a danger, a, t a, a temptation that Satan often presents to us, okay? A temptation to think that we're doing the work alone. But whose work is it? Jesus. It's Christ's work. That's right, okay? Okay, so here's the question. So, the disciples, they came directly to Jesus, right? And Jesus took them apart. He said, you know what? Let's go to a quiet place and let's talk, all right? Let's talk about the word of God. Let me share with you. So that's what the disciples did. But what, what can we do today? Pray. How can we... How do we have communion with God? We can pray. pray. We can pray. Okay. Anything? Read the Bible. Anything else? Read we, the Bible. We can go to church. Go to church. Okay, keep going. We could sing songs. Sing songs. That's right. What else? We can share Jesus. Share G That's right. We can share Jesus with others, right? Okay. Preach. So all these are great answers, okay? But guess what? We have the best example. The one who's always our example. And who is always our example? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And what did Jesus do? Do you know that even Jesus had communion with God? Yes. Even Jesus had communion with God? You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. Even Jesus went apart and he, he took time alone. Okay? But I thought Jesus, I thought Jesus was King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So why would he need to do such a thing? He was in human form. Why do you think he would need to do that? He's he was in human form. Because oh. Jesus and God Jesus is the son of God. He he needs to talk with God the Father. Right. Okay? So okay, you guys you guys are all right, okay? So he was in human form, so he came to this earth as a man, right? As a man, and he did what? He prayed. He often took time out and he prayed, right? To talk with God, his father. That is an example to us that if Jesus needed to pray, then so do we. So who wants to read what's on the screen here? Me. Go ahead, Ariana. He was our example. Even he took time away from the crowds and his disciples to pray. That's right. Do you know that there was no person busier than Jesus? No person more sought after than Jesus. No person had more to do, more people calling his name, more people tugging on his, on his garments, right? Than Jesus. No work was greater than what he had to do in saving us. But what did Jesus do? He still did what? Took time to pray. Take time to pray? He still took time to pray. Even though he was busy, busy. Do you know that saving, saving souls is, is a great work? Yeah. Do you know that's the greatest work that could ever be done? But even he took time to pray. Okay. And I, I really hope the Lord is speaking to all of our hearts, especially us adults, okay? Because oftentimes we get so busy. Mommy and daddy get so, so busy. 
And you know what? Sometimes they may forget to take time out with God. But you know what you can do? You know how you can best help them? You can remind them to pray. Okay? And you, you can say, Mommy, Mommy, let's pray. Or Mommy, did you take time, to, time out today to pray? Okay? And you can, you can be quiet and you can help them <laughs> to enjoy that time with Jesus. All right? Janelle, do you have a question? You had something to say? Um, uh, that they, you know, get, they can even mind too while working. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. What'd you say, Janelle? Okay, I get uh, it. So <laughs> um, they can pray. They can, they can pray in their mind game. Yes, yes, they can do that. <laughs> Brother Andrew, you, you had it. You're here. Right? Yeah, I I kind of got disconnected. Oh no! Okay. Yeah, I was trying to reach out. Okay, I'm back. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So we see that even Jesus took time to pray. So guess what happens when we pray? When we pray, what happens? We find what? We find what? Good. I'm unmute yourself, Annalisa. <laughs> what are you saying, Annalisa? Strength. Good. Strength. Strength. Okay. We find strength when we pray. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, guess what? <laughs> this is our heart, right? So, this is our heart. And this is the voice of God. We're just going to use this to represent the voice of God, okay? Okay? So when there's a lot of things going on, right, I need to connect to the voice of God. And guess what? When I'm in here, I can hear, I can hear very well, okay? I can hear everything that's going on very well here when I'm connected, okay? But when there's a million things going on, right, when... There's a million things going on around me. When the noise is louder, guess what happens to the voice of God? Can you hold the voice? When all that's going in my heart is louder, what happens to the voice of God? It gets quiet. quiet. Now, does the voice of God really get quiet? No. The voice of God is always the same. He's always speaking. He's always speaking no matter what. But why can't I hear him? Why does he sound so quiet? I, I can't hear. I can't. It's so quiet. I can't hear anything. Why? Because the, the things in your heart is loud. Oh, everything around me is so loud, right? Right? And I'm so busy and, I, and there's so much to do and everything is speaking louder, it seems, than God himself, right? So when everything around me is too loud, then what happens to the voice of God? It gets quiet. So, so how can I fix this, guys? How can I fix it? By, by putting... Hold on. Let me put this on here. Okay. Let, let them help you, Hannah. How can I fix this? Something's wrong here. How can I fix it? Move, move this out of the way. How can I fix it? Hmm? How to fix it is make all the voices low down and put Jesus' voice high. Then you could hear Jesus. Oh, okay. So so maybe we take the quiet off of Jesus' voice, right? Okay, take that off. Okay. And let's make this quiet. So my heart is quiet. Quiet. And all that's within it is quiet. quiet. Now it is. And now the voice of God. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So the voice of God. What happens to the voice of God when this is quiet? When my heart is quiet? It gets what? Louder. Louder. Okay. 
So guess what? My heart needs to be quiet and still to loudly hear the voice of God. So how do I make my heart still? What do I do? What do I do? Come on, guys. All, all, the, all the busy things in your heart, you have to shut down. Make them wait. Okay. So, okay, thank you. Let's leave the board. Okay. So, first of all, right, we can share with Jesus. We take that time to commune with him, right? We can unload all of our thoughts and our cares. But do we stop there? After we unload our thoughts and our cares, is that the end of our time? No. Yeah. No. What do we need to do now? We need to do what? We need to be quiet. We need to wait. We need to, as our verse says, be still. And know that he is God. We need to be still and we need to listen to the voice of God. Okay? And when we listen, the voice of God becomes louder and louder. And he's able to minister to our hearts and make us fit to do his work. Okay? So... Do you know that even Christ did this when he was there praying? We have a great example of what Jesus, even Jesus himself did. Okay. So our best example of strength, we, that, the, the strength that we find in prayer is when Christ himself prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. And who can tell me what happened? Who can read this quickly? Okay, I'll read it, okay? It says, and he was withdrawn from them about his stones cast, oh, cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. So what, what, did you, what happened when Jesus prayed? An angel was there strengthening him, okay? So we have to remember our greatest strength is when it comes when we take time to commune with Jesus. And the, one of the best ways to do that is uh, that's pray. That's to be still that's and know that's that he is God. Is that the girl? All right, so let's pray, okay? So we'll pray to close off. And then if anyone has any questions from the youth class or even from our class, the children's class, then anyone can ask, okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful for this lesson, Lord God, and the reminder, Lord, that we need to commune with you, Lord, not just once, not just twice, but daily, Lord, and truthfully, every second of our lives, we know we go through so much, Lord God, but we especially need to take that time out to pray with you, to spend that time with you, that we may be strengthened to do your work and to do your will. There's no other way to do your work and to do your will unless we take that time with you. Help us to understand and to remember these words. In Jesus' name, amen.